Hello, this video is sponsored by BritBox, the premier streaming service for Britain's most beloved TV shows. I'm Lawrence Brown and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to words. Specifically, words widely associated with Americans that are catching on in Britain. Throughout their shared history, Britain and America have enjoyed and sometimes endured a literal exchange of words. This began with the first English settlers in America and continues at pace during the age of the internet. In fact, in my last YouTube long, I filled your fact basket with seven British words that are catching on in America. I will link to that video at the end. And if this is the sort of content you woke up craving and you haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel, do that now. In the meantime, with a little help from my British followers, here are seven American English words that are catching on in Britain. With some of the words on this list, it's perhaps more accurate to say that they have caught on. The word movie, which is shorthand for moving picture, is one such word. This sentiment seems to be shared by YouTube commenter Nigel Cole 1936, as well as plenty of other respondents. In fact, while Brits were once more likely to employ the word film, movie was nonetheless a widely used alternative even when I were a lad. And that makes sense, especially since the cinema is what gave Britain so much access to American English in the first place. But wait, Lawrence, did you just imply that British people have stopped using the word film? No! Try listening next time, Lawrence. Okay. What I meant was Brits now seem to be using movie at roughly the same rate. For the sake of comparison, a wide chasm between the two very much still exists in American English, where the word movie originated in approximately 1912 exactly. Funnily enough, it was around that time that America gave us the next word. But before that, I'm not yet done with movies, because there's one other cinematic entity that America borrowed from Britain, and that entity is 20th century film star Cary Grant. Born into poverty in Bristol, England, before I'm Embarking on a life-changing visit to the United States, Grant's life is at the centre of a new four-part series on BritBox. What accent you got, kid? Uh, English. Archie, starring Jason Isaacs in the title role, Grant's real name was Archibald Leach, is an intriguing portrayal of the star's life that includes plenty of cameos from other stars from the golden age of cinema. And if my humour ever gets too much for you, why not indulge in some dramatic relief by checking out the fantastic crime dramas Payback, Shetland and Irvine Welsh's Crime. You can stream your other favourite British shows via your smartphone, tablet, desktop, Chromecast, Apple TV or Roku device, as well as LG and Samsung smart TVs. Head to BritBox.com slash LostInThePond and use the promo code LostInThePond when signing up for a monthly subscription and you'll get 50% off your first month. The link is also in my description below. Because while the word truck existed long before American English, the sense of a motor vehicle for transporting heavy goods was coined here in 1913. This is a Prius, so just pretend. Two years earlier, the British decided that such a vehicle should be known thereafter as a lorry, a word famously still in use today. However, just as with movie, truck has been a well-known alternative among Brits for quite some time. It might explain why YouTube commenter Claire6258 observed, I have found myself thinking, oh, there's a truck stop instead of a lorry park. In fact, I myself recall using the words truck and lorry interchangeably when I still lived in England. However, since moving to the United States, I can honestly say I've not uttered the word lorry in about a decade. Except in this video, obviously. And that's because between the phrases driving a truck and driving a lorry, yeah. Americans are far more likely to go with the first one. But surprisingly, since the late 70s, so are the British, albeit to a lesser extent. As a lad growing up in England, the word pants always referred to my underwear. But then so did other words like keks, duds and undies. So it's perhaps no surprise that several Brits, including YouTube commenter CD4227, picked this as the American word they use the most. Well think about it, with all of those underwear synonyms hanging about in Britain, pants was always going to lose its grip on power. So why not form a coalition with the American definition and put an end to the iron rule of trousers? I've just realised that joke works on multiple levels. T ironing. Trousers. And speaking of levels, it appears that Brits are more likely to use suit pants or dress pants than Americans are to use suit trousers or dress trousers. In fact, the British are far more likely to use dress pants than they themselves are to use dress trousers, a phrase that probably didn't exist until six seconds ago. And that's because it sounds absolutely pants, which is itself a British word meaning rubbish. Oh, and speaking of rubbish, that brings us on 
to this. Believe it or not, trash has made its way to Britain with increasing regularity since the start of the millennium, and that's not just a reference to fly-tipping. Its growing popularity is probably evidenced by the vast number of British respondents who cited it, including David on Facebook. Of course, you're probably thinking, Ooh, Lawrence, in one of your YouTube shorts, you told us. Trash, much like another chiefly American word, not only predates American English, but was used by English people in the late Middle Ages. If that's the case, how did it make it onto this list? Well, because in America, after World War II, trash, along with garbage, became the predominant word for waste. Plus, it's my channel and I make the rules. And while it still has a way to go before overtaking the various definitions of rubbish, it is more much closer than rubbish is to trash on this side of the pond. Both Britain and America have no shortage of terms of endearment like love and mate in Britain and guys and dude in the US. But those last two each have something in common. They've both been catching on in Britain. In fact, I distinctly recall using the term guys as a gender neutral term when directing actors on the British stage. And no, we weren't doing guys and or dolls. But I was surprised to find that dude, a word that some speculate may have derived from the song Yankee Doodle, has followed suit. In fact, since the end of the 1900s instances of dude in British English have absolutely soared. Spared on, no doubt, by cinematic masterpieces like Bill and Ted or Dude, Where's My Car? So when YouTube commenter I Am Marwood asks, Does yo or dude count? They are my go to's. The answer is yes. However, one common theme that I detected among the responses is that the British use of do doesn't sound right to American ears. In fact, one commenter said that it sounds cringe, a bit like when an elder millennial tries to speak Zuma slang. Anyone who's watched a British YouTube channel will know that brilliant isn't the only adjective that we use to mean fantastic. Indeed, in my own lifetime I've heard ace, mega, wicked, amazeball somehow, shit hot, and yes, awesome. In many ways you could argue that this is Americans returning the gift since the word awesome predates even the first colony at Roanoke. But for most of its life awesome typically meant full of awe in the archaic sense that one is full of dread. It was only after World War II that its positive definition emerged in the United States. And it hasn't stopped emerging since, with instances of That's Awesome recently usurping the ever popular That's Fantastic, while hot on the heels of longtime Queen That's Amazing. In Britain, it is admittedly further down in the pecking order, but the fact that it's pecking at all suggests that it's about to take off. That was one giant bird pun. In fact, the word may even be addictive to some people, like Lawrence Kirk 8606 who wrote, Awesome has crept in, which I tried to fend off for years. And I'm willing to forgive my namesake so long as he doesn't supplement the word awesome with sauce. As in awesome sauce. Humans. If I've learned anything from living extensively in Britain and America, it's that both countries like to draw up regional battle lines on how to address a group of people. In Philadelphia, but also Liverpool and Scotland, you'll often hear yous. In Pittsburgh, residents will say yins, while much of Britain might say you lot. And the American South famously gave us the word y'all, a word that came up time and time again to the question that prompted this very video. And in a phenomenon that I've also witnessed in America's Midwest, Many of those commenters reported using it ironically at first, and then it just stuck. Reading around, it seems like y'all, much like dude, is a common refrain within Britain's gaming community, where interactions with Americans are highly common. In fact, if British English texts are to be believed, y'all has long since overtaken yous and is coming steadfastly for you lot. That almost sounded like a threat. Sorry. So let me know what youans think about this, and whether it has a chance of going mainstream in the UK. Inevitably, there will be the odd, sometimes very odd, British person watching this and thinking, I've lived here for 970 years and I've never heard anyone use any of those words. But that could be because you don't interact with young people or don't have any friends or wisely don't use social media. If you do use social media, then there's already no hope for you, so why not follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Threads and Instagram? In the meantime, if you haven't watched the much talked about seven British words that are catching on in America, I insist you do that next. Until the next video, goodbye.